and ignoring all the big boys on Wall Street. And it's, it's an utter scandal. Uh, in my view, uh, FINRA and its board of governors has fallen down on the job. Now, why, what, what's your lawsuit all about? Why have, why have you sued FINRA? Well, our client has sued FINRA, and uh, the president of our client is a lieutenant colonel in the Army. Uh, in fact, he's about to go off to Afghanistan, having served two years of duty in Iraq. Uh, he is trying to get information out of FINRA that will shed light on, among other things, uh, the relationship between FINRA and NASD with Madoff and his family in bed together for too many years. Uh, we are seeking to determine whether and the extent to which FINRA and NASD invested with Madoff. Now hold on, uh, hold on right there if certain. you can, Counselor, because we got to get specific here. Uh, FINRA, I, I was unaware of how much money FINRA actually had. It gets its money from all these traders around the country uh, who donate to FINRA's causes. Adds up its operating expenses are close to a billion dollars a year. I think I have that right. But they, they suffered huge losses in 2008. Now, everybody suffered huge losses in 2008, but their losses amounted to about, and I'm, I calculated it here according to their annual report, which I have in my hands, about $624 million. Is is there any way to tell whether any of those losses came from investing in Madoff? Not from their annual report, and the members are still kept in the dark. Uh, the annual report makes a cursory disclosure of the losses, which wiped out four years of earnings. Uh, these assets belong to the members of FINRA and are necessary for the protection of the investing public. They are being wasted. Now, what happened when you tried to get that information from FINRA, and how did you try to get it? Well, our client sent a letter to FINRA telling FINRA that he was a member of the organization, that he was entitled to the documents under Delaware law, and it's incorporated in Delaware. And as a result of that, uh, he laid out the reasons why each of the categories of information were important to members and to the investing public and basically he got a uh, cold shoulder now in your lawsuit uh, you also focus on mary shapiro you filed your lawsuit civil division superior court of the district of columbia and Amerivet against finra uh, you suggest in this report and as some of the information has been public in this lawsuit that mary shapiro left finra with a bonus of from anywhere from five to twenty five million dollars now we should emphasize she's been railing against executive bonuses for the past couple of months as the head of sec saying that they have they were one of the causes of the financial mess we're in and yet she walked away with a pretty hefty bonus how did you find that out about how much she received well finally uh... after a good deal of public probing the sec itself revealed that something over seven million dollars was paid to her as a goodbye uh, present. Uh, what we don't know is the full extent of it. There have been media accounts uh, speculating that the number may be as high as $25 million payable over time. We don't know what the $7 million refers to. Was that the initial payment? Was that, uh, uh, what did it cover? Yeah, now I have, I have no problems with people giving out bonuses. What I have problems with is people railing against bonuses after they have received a big bonus themselves. Well, it's even worse than that because it's not just getting a bonus or calling it a, a deferred compensation. Uh, this is payment to someone who failed at her regulatory job. She did not properly regulate the brokers and dealers in securities that she should have been regulating, that FINRA and NASD should have been regulating. Bernie Madoff is certainly a prime example of somebody who managed to conduct his fraud for so many years while his company was under uh, supposed investigation, supposed uh, supervision by NASD. Right. Now, f finally, I, I want you to stay with us because we're going to build out uh, our, our panelists here, but uh, would you be satisfied with that information, the information about Mary Shapiro, the information about whether, whether and how much they invested in Bernie Madoff, or are you after something much bigger? 
Well, it, it all is interrelated. It goes to whether the management of NASD and FINRA, including Mary Shapiro, have breached their fiduciary duties to the organization itself and to its members. Uh, the members can then decide what action to take, if any, once they have the information. That information may give rise to suits by the members against the Board of Governors or the management, or it may take uh, the shape of other action. All right. Counselors. But for the present. Yeah, go ahead. Finish yeah, your statement. Sorry. But for the present, we are merely trying to get documents and information to which our client is entitled. Counselor, stay with us. Uh, while most of the press has been missing the FINRA chapter of the Madoff story, they've focused almost all their attention on the SEC. So has the SEC become the fall guy here? Let's ask former SEC Chairman Harvey Pitt. Good to see you again, Harvey. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you, and it's good to be with you. Well, what do you think? I, I know you're, you're a big supporter of Mary Shapiro. You, you admire the work that she did at FINRA. You, you admire the work that she's doing now. Uh, but shouldn't she be called to account for, one, uh, whether or not FINRA put money in with Bernie Madoff, and two, uh, whether she deserved that bonus? Uh, no, I don't think uh, uh, so, and for a number of reasons. First of all, one has to understand Mary Shapiro came to FINRA when uh, it was the NASD and when it had severe problems, it had been pursued by the SEC, and she helped rebuild that organization and made it incredibly effective. In addition, the notion that somehow FINRA was responsible for Madoff's uh, investment scam uh, misses a very simple fact and is the reason why other media haven't picked this up because FINRA has no responsibility over investment advisors. It only has responsibility over broker-dealers and there is an right. ongoing That's debate about whether its authority should be uh, expo expanded. That's a very important distinction. By the way, we want to mention before we go further, we did invite FINRA to come on and represent themselves, and uh, as of showtime, they, they weren't, weren't uh, able or willing to do that. Uh, but nevertheless, I, mean, I don't think, Harvey, anybody's saying that they were responsible. I mean, Madoff was responsible for Madoff, and he fooled a lot of people. He fooled people at FINRA. He, he fooled uh, Henry Kaufman, for God's sake. So, I mean, the guy, the guy knew how to fool a lot of people. But what they are saying is that what this particular lawsuit is saying, if we had open records of the books of FINRA to see where they were investing their money, we could find out if there was any conflict of interest. Don't we at least have the right to do that? Well, I can't um, really address the merits of the lawsuit. I've only briefly read the complaint. But what I can address is the fact that the conflict that supposedly exists is not a real conflict because FINRA had no regulatory jurisdiction over Madoff's investment activities. Now, as a broker-dealer, they certainly had jurisdiction over him. And I am certain that whatever their involvements were with uh, Madoff, they will disclose those and talk about what they knew. But I think this whole chapter, which is a very sad one in the history of investment advisors and uh, represents a serious problem to uh, many, many investors, um, doesn't need the additional complication of trying to bring in additional people who are not responsible for and didn't have a conflict with respect to Madoff's investment activities. Well, it may not have been a conflict by the letter of the law, although that hasn't yet been decided, but just the appearance, doesn't it look bad, Harvey? Well, I think that if you are investing, and first of all, we don't know whether they invested money, and if so, we don't we know don't. under what circumstances. And we want to find out, but we don't. You're right. Right. Um, so I, I, I'm not even um, uh, able to assume the validity of the, um, of the charge, but the point is, if they invested money with somebody they also regulated, um, then I think people could certainly ask certain questions about why they were doing that, what their policy was, and okay. how it permitted them to invest in somebody who ultimately